I think the values that China will represent remain unclear at this point. That yes, this emerging power is going to overtake the world with honesty, dedication, humanity, morality. The World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, is known for its winter meetings of the world's most powerful business and government leaders. It now holds an annual summer meeting in China. The northeastern coastal city of Dalian offered the foreign visitors industrial tours. In the evening, it dazzled them with performances that gave a sneak preview of China's aspirations for the future. It goes back to Confucianism and is the idea that you know, there should be a proper balance between heaven and earth, between nature and society. And, and they're groping for that, uh, but it's still at this stage fairly elusive. China is known as the factory of the world. It's poised to overtake Japan to become the world's second largest economy after the United States. And it's enjoying increasing influence in global politics. China is going to be defining in many respects what this 21st century is going to be about. And one of the key questions, I mean, this, what China's role will be, will depend partly on what the internal dynamics are in China, but also very much how the rest of the world responds to China. And when I say the rest of the world, the most important actor in this respect is, of course, the United States. U.S.-China historian Orville Schell. You know, with the West and the United States and economic crisis, diminished power and China's economic power rising, they're, they're for the first time in, in, a, in, in a century and a half, there's a prospect of a more equal sort of partnership-like relationship. Can we do that with such different political systems? such different histories, different cultures, I don't know. Orville Schell is director of the Center on U.S.-China Relations at the Asia Society in New York. He says if the U.S. and China can treat each other as equal partners... Then I think China does have a chance of being, of continuing to evolve slowly and piecemeal uh, into something that will be more open and, and more constructive in the world rather than more pugnacious you know, still steeped in victim culture, uh, nursing its grievances and, and not fully playing a, a, a role of a, of a, of a you know, responsible uh, world power. Panelist Kenneth Lieberthal was director for Asia on the U.S. National Security Council under President Bill Clinton. The Chinese are quite good in terms of economic and social rights and quite poor in terms of civil rights. And of course, uh, part of the international community is more concerned with the civil rights side. So I think it's going to take uh, some period of time before there's agreement on basic norms in the uh, human rights area. China, seen from Southeast Asia, looks quite different. Mohammed Lutfi heads Indonesia's investment promotion agency. He spoke on a panel about how increasingly influential Asian powers would like to change global financial institutions. We've been ruled by 60 years of the Western dominations. You know, um, uh, how we, we, we trade, how we govern. Well, the, the norms right now has been changed. You know, with, uh, with, uh, with the Chinese influence, with the Japanese yen's influence uh, to, the, to the world community. Yes, I it will be it will be equal. It will be more prosper, and we're gonna get that prosperity much faster. Our future lies in the hand of China. That I am so upbeat. Pakistan and China both have fought wars with their mutual neighbor, India. China is a key provider of military technology to Pakistan, and unlike the United States, China does not link aid with democracy. China does not have any covert political ambitions to go in any country and occupy its resources. Their interaction is business to business, business, human to human, people to people relationship. And that is the difference between the European, American and Chinese. 
China's economic and political systems are winning greater respect. We used to think of China as being in a transition to something that we would recognize in the West, the sort of democratic, multi-party, pluralist democracy. I, I'm not so sure now that China is in a transition to be more like us or closer to being like us. They may be in a transition to being something else for which they are going to set the model. And it will be more congruent in ways, I think, with Chinese tradition, which has always been hierarchical. It's always been centered on uniformity of ideological view, uh, had a great deal of emphasis put on obedience, on loyalty, on staying in line. So that may be China's contribution for a certain kind of country, a, 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 a more efficient, effective, orderly uh, system that raises a lot of people out of poverty, but has for a certain bandwidth of society is not very free and open. But it would be very foolish, I think, on the basis of that to deny what it can accomplish and has accomplished. Mm -hmm.